America is mourning the loss of one of the most iconic first ladies to ever grace the White House. Nancy Reagan died Sunday at her home in Los Angeles at the age of 94. Nancy is being remembered for her influential presence during Ronald Reagan's presidency and the love story she shared with her husband. And joining us now with more on Nancy Reagan's legacy is senior White House correspondent Bill Plant, who covered the Reagan administration, and CBS News contributor Peggy Noonan, who served as a special assistant and speechwriter for President Reagan. Thank you both so much for being here. So we heard a little bit of the meeting of Nancy and, and Ronald Reagan in Charlie's obituary, but Peggy, just set the scene for us. He was the president of the Screen Actors Guild. She was an actress. There was a bit of a red scare going on at the time. Let's just yes, call it that. Yes, a bit of a red scare <laughs> yeah. going on in Hollywood. There was an act, Nancy's name at that time was Nancy Davis. There was a Nancy Davis who was reported to be connected to some, some unfortunate organizations. Nancy Davis, who became Nancy Reagan, thought this might hurt her career. So she went to the Screen Actors Guild. Actually, she went to a friend and said, go to Ronnie Reagan at the Screen Actors Guild, get me with him. And he said, sure. And then Nancy said, actually, I think I'd better go to dinner with him. And we'd better <laughs> discuss this at dinner. So she had her eye on this guy. They went to dinner. They saw Sophie Tucker do her act at dinner at a little Los Angeles nightclub. And Nancy fell in love with him that night. I asked her why once. We had a big talk about it. She said, you know, he wasn't like other actors. Other actors are always talking about their next role or the role they're working on now or their past role. They're always talking about themselves. She said, he was so different. He talked about history. I said, what kind of history did he talk about? She said, actually, Civil War battles. <laughs> 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 now, that doesn't sound romantic, but she found it deeply seductive. And, and so she, she had her eye on this man, and she was crazy about him from the beginning. He took a while. She didn't. It was quite a love story, and Bill, you covered the Reagan administration, and the press made a big deal about the gays when she became first lady and the loving way she looked at him. Reflect on that a little. All during the campaign in 1980, we would remark on the fact that whenever uh, Ronald Reagan got up to speak, then Governor Reagan, she would be on the platform with him and she would look at him sort of like this. <laughs> <laughs> the gaze fixed in yeah. total awe. And we thought this can't be real. This mm -hmm. is, you know, this is some kind of show. Well, it wasn't really. I mean, it was done deliberately, but she meant it, as we later came to discover, because they were about as close as any couple I've ever watched in my life. Uh, and they were genuinely so. They embraced in public. Um, he famously wrote her a love letter on their 39th anniversary, which was as warm and loving as anything you can possibly imagine. I don't have the text right here or I'd read it to you, but they were very, very close. And she was, in some ways, I think, his alter ego. Hmm. For example, she worried so that he wouldn't have to. He had a very sunny disposition. Mm -hmm. um, and she was much more interested in making sure that everything worked and nobody did anything that would bother him. Yeah. Yeah, she she was adored very, him and was his protector at the same time. Right. She was very influential in hiring and or at least consulting with who got into the White House, even during the 1976 presidential campaign. Also, she was very instrumental in Don Regan. He was the chief of staff, at the, you, Peggy, mm -hmm. you will know, obviously, um, during the Iran-Contra scandal. And she was influential in helping or leading to his ouster. Yeah, Nancy and Ronnie, as she always called them, uh, in the Reagan White House, they had had a great chief of staff in James Baker. James Baker moved on. Don Regan came in, who'd been former Treasury Secretary. It never worked. Regan didn't understand the importance of Nancy and her importance in, in the whole organization as everything worked. And and I think you covered him. That just didn't work anyway. Nancy sort of scoped out this isn't going to work. There was a tough conversation between Nancy and, and Mr. Regan on the telephone. And Mr. Regan had the very poor judgment to hang up at her at one Yikes. point. And when I heard about that, I thought, OK, you have to find yourself another job now. Because <laughs> you will not be here for long. Well, even during the first term, and that happened uh, during the second term, she was very instrumental in personnel decisions, and she did it by working very closely with the late Mike Deaver, who was yeah. the deputy chief of staff, and James Baker, who was then the chief of staff. The three of them really sort of steered things. Everybody else was on the outside and kind of knew it and didn't like it much. True. But nobody could go against her. 
And uh, so she did rule the roost, and she was very protective, and it, uh, for her, it worked. After the assassination attempt, she didn't want him to run again, right, Bill? That's correct. Were you surprised when he made the decision? Because everybody said she, had, she was so tough and she was always really influencing him. I think most of us thought he would run again. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure that we were aware how opposed she was at the time. Yes. That was a, an extremely horrifying event for her. This is the man she loves and adores. He is at the center of her life. And suddenly word comes through the Secret Service. Shots have been fired at the president. Then they found out, in fact, the president had been hit. It was terrible for her. Let me tell you, one day I had asked her, you remember uh, Ronald Reagan the day he was shot? He said a bunch of very funny and amusing and touching things. He also wrote them down for nurses and others in the hospital room to see um, and for Nancy to see. Nancy kept every one of them and brought them to me one day just about 10 years ago. I, I'd oh. been asking, could I see them? Could mm -hmm. I see them? She had them in a folder and Aww. she opened them up. And there were the beautiful little funny things that Reagan said to everybody when he was sick. He had a, a tube down his throat mm -hmm. and couldn't speak. So, honey, I forgot to duck was there. Um, and I hope you're all Republicans was there. <laughs> and you know, that was followed by his doctor saying the most beautiful thing. Reagan is laid out, he's bleeding, they can't find what, exactly what's wrong with him. Reagan says amusingly to the doctors peering down at him, I just hope you're all Republicans. And the doctor so graciously said, today, Mr. President, we're all Republicans. Oh. Oh, it was so touching story. and it that's was grace story. meeting grace. It, it, it's incredible and we're going to talk about the future as far as the funeral is concerned, but I want to ask again about sort of the past in that she also brought this old Hollywood glamour to the White House. I mean, granted, we were coming off of Watergate, we were coming off those those interest rates that were killing us and the long lines at the gas pump, but, but you know, you had Frank Sinatra there on a regular basis, and it was, I mean, she was, that glamour that she brought to the White House seemed, everybody seemed to be happy with that. Well, that's one reason that she got off on slightly a wrong foot mm -hmm. in 1981. She looked around the place and said, you know, this is kind of tacky. <laughs> right. And she raised $800,000 to redecorate the interior and another 200000 to buy a new set of china for the White House. And the country was in the middle of a recession. And people went bananas. Yeah, this they was, did. This was just not, you know, it was bad PR. He but, was quick to her defense, though. That's right. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yes, he was. But you know what else? There's, I think you're, you're putting your finger on something important. The Reagans in their eight years had 56 state dinners. Um, the Bushes in comparison had six. So the Reagans had a heck of a lot of state dinners. That was part of their reflection, a, part of, a reflection of the fact that the Reagans came in from California thinking we're in a new town, we're gonna meet everybody, we are gonna have fun, we're inviting everybody over. Tip O'Neill, come on, we're having a big <laughs> dinner. They reinstituted the serving of liquor in their White House. They thought everybody should have fun, have a drink, have a smoke. <laughs> so it was That's the great. return of a lovely social sense that, that maybe hadn't been as vivid since the Kennedys. And they had a ball with it. She certainly brought, down, brought back fashion, too. That's right, the Nancy Reagan style. I mean, it was Hollywood. Mm -hmm. I mean, she the red dresses and all. You know, I remember very vividly as a child, like being very okay. aware of what was happening there in the White House as far as like glamour and style. Yes. You know, it's, it's strange, but you do remember those things. Well, and here's another thing about her. She loved gossip. Yes. She loved to know uh, who was doing what to whom. Yeah. <laughs> gossip, you mean? Well said. No, we call it the history of humans. <laughs> Not uh, gossip. Then uh, one, one year in the mid 80s, at the reception for the White House Correspondents' Dinner, we were stuck in line, <clears throat> my then date and I, behind Dick Cavett, who was trading yeah. show business stories with the president. On and on and on. And we're standing there in front of Nancy Reagan, and I'm groping for things to talk about. And I said to her, well, Mrs. Reagan, I, I, I think you know my, my almost fiance. And she looked at her after looking at me and said, when's your birthday, dear? <laughs> right, she was into astrology. And Robin gave her her birthday. And she gave me this withering look and said, Get her a ring. <laughs> oh, I love it. Which I Put did. a ring on it. <laughs> Which I did. That's great. Fantastic That's great memories. Story. Thank you both so much, Bill Plant, Peggy Noonan. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you.
Look we had it. some great stories yes. with these guys. We kept we wanted to keep talking, but we weren't able to. No, but Peggy did tell us another really moving story, and it was a conversation she had with Nancy Reagan about how moved she was after the funeral, and it was during the procession when Nancy looked out the window, and she said that she just noticed that all of America came out, Boy Scout troops, veterans groups, people holding signs on the overpasses saying thank you. She even talked about a Vietnam vet who put on his old ill-fitting uniform, held a flag, and saluted as she passed. I'll never get over it, she said. America made her happy all her life, but never more than on that day. That's right. Uh, the Daily News here in New York City has this photograph of Nancy. It says America's First Lady. That's how a lot of people feel today. Yeah, she really redefined the role.